Can we celebrate our pastors? Can we celebrate our pastors? Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for giving us expression, giving us expression for really living to ensure our growth. Pastor and mama, every day, they are talking about Kings Up, talking about you. They said that they don't care about me in that church. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know what is going on. <laughs> Amen. All is talking about you. How things are going to get better for you. There's somebody, the person is not in school. How do we get this person to be in school? There's somebody, this person is not going spiritually. Okay, what do we do? Let's start praying for them. This person is not married. What do we do about this person? Let's start praying for this person. This person doesn't have a job yet. What do we do? Let us talk to this person. Our pastors have a heart for us. Genuine hearts. They love us. Glory to God. Amen. They love us. We're going to learn about love this morning, and so you're going to understand when I say that our pastors love us. One more time. Can we please celebrate them? Amen. Thank you so much. All right, please celebrate yourselves and please be seated. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. Also celebrate the best choir on this side of heaven. Glory to God. Celebrate radiance. All of you that didn't celebrate with us, I've marked your faces. I've marked your faces. By the time we are singing in the second service, we we'll ask you to go outside first. And then people that celebrated will wait here. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor, for the opportunity to teach this morning. Um, I highly celebrate and do not take it for granted. Glory to God. Amen. Quickly, we don't have more time. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 3. 1 Thessalonians, written to the people in Thessalonica, or Thessalonica. You know, I don't like to call it Thessalonica because, you know, the Yoruba, the Yoruba in me does not just like it. You know, Thessalonica. <laughs> you now wonder, what did Tessa actually do to actually make a Havika? All right. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 3. Everybody, can we read together? I want to go. So remembering the Lord without ceasing, your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and Father. One more time, can we read it again? Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God. One more time, again. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and Father. You know, I love the adjectives that were used in this text. I love the adjectives. Work of faith, labor of love, patience of hope. You know, fantastic adjective. It goes on to tell you that the adjective that qualifies, that qualifies faith is work. Are we together? It said work of faith, which means that in faith, there is work to be done. Are we together? That faith itself is a work. Are we together? He said that your labor of love. Are we together here? Yeah. Your labor of love, which means that in love, there is a labor. Are we together? Then he says that your patience of hope, which means that in hoping and trusting God for things to happen, we have patience. Praise Jesus. You know, I, I, I was telling my wife one time, I said that, that you pray for something and it doesn't work. It, you don't see the result at that time. I said, you don't stop praying for it. You keep speaking it. I said, because in speaking it, your patience is developed. Are we together? Your patience is developed. Your trust in God is developed. So that's why we are not so, we are not so, we are not, so, we are not, we are not, we are not flaky. We are not flaky people. That, oh, I want a car. I have to get it now. I have to get it now. No, no, we are not flaky people. It's called the patience of hope. As we hope, our patience is being built. Amen. Glory to God. But the key word there that I want us to pay attention to is not a key word in the text, but what I want us to pay attention to is the labor of love. Let's open to Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. Hebrews 6 verse 10. If you're there, praise God. Come on, if you're there, praise God. Amen. All right. Can we all read together? One, two, go. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown towards his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Glory to God. He said God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love. God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love. Again we see that in love there is a work and there is a laboring. Are we together? Amen. You know February is tag the month of love. I don't know why that is anyway. <laughs> For obvious reasons. Hey, I'm just joking. It's like the love month. You know, people get to express 
receive love during this time, you know. I call it, this is the, um, this is the aww season, you know. You just go online, be like, oh, oh, this person has, oh, oh, you know. And, you know, there is all manner of the spirit of love and affection in this time, uh, at this time, you know. Uh, people have marked this year, you know. You know, do you know that some people actually plan, some people actually plan Valentine. Like one year, six months at the time, that this is what I'm going to do for my partner. This is what I'm going to do. It's not a bad thing, it's a good thing now, right? The good thing is expression of love. Some people plan the Valentine. But the, 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 only, the only bad thing that would be in it is that you are only planning to express your love on a particular day. Are we together? Now, it is okay to save money to get your partner stuff, right? Very fantastic. Save money to show and express your love to your partner, right? But the expression of love does not end on a particular day. Are we together now? It continues. It continues afterwards. But that's, 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 the, that's what I'm talking about. The, what I'm talking about this morning is that when it comes to love, everybody seems to have an expert opinion. Everybody. Let's take, for example, ask anybody, what, is, what advice do you give to married people? That person is not married, though. The person is in secondary school. What advice do you give to married people? I tell you, they will have advice. Ask somebody who has, been, who has had failed marriages. What advice do you give to married people? The person will have advice. Somebody who is married will have advice. Somebody who has, who has, who, who, somebody who does not even know anything about love will have advice. Why? Because when it is a subject of love, everybody has an expert opinion. Expert opinion. Everybody has, you know. <laughs> people, in fact, by the time you give them to talk, they will talk and talk and even write a book on love. <laughs> Amen. Glory to Jesus. Because everyone believes that they know about love. Everyone thinks that they know about love. Why? Because we have seen movies. We have watched TV shows. If you watch K-drama a lot, ah, you'll be an expert on love. Hey, <laughs> glory to God. You know K-drama, when the guy is walking and the lady is walking, oh, ah, she just hits, bish, and they'll now do slow motion. When I start playing one kind of very funny sound, and they'll do slow-mo, 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 pick the book up, look at each other, and now stand together since I was born. Now I'm getting old. I've never seen that happen. <laughs> <laughs> together. So people think that they know about love. Why? Because you've seen movies, you've seen TV shows, you've seen experiences from people, good and bad experiences. Everybody thinks that they know about love. Disclaimer, this is not a relationship sermon. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We are because people think that they know how to love. Or people think that they know about love or they know love. But they do not. Amen. One of the things that we see in the scriptures, one of the major characteristics of love what is the major? What is one major characteristic of love? Anybody? One major characteristic of love. Major characteristic is what? Patience. Okay, I know you start mentioning names of females now. Oh yeah, let's go. Ah, that's the name of a female. <laughs> Say patience, right? Is it? Are you sure? Is it long suffering or suffer long? <laughs> yeah, patience. Who else want to go again? Love is kind, right? Okay, great. Fantastic. Great. If we're going to stay here, we're not going to live here today. <laughs> All right. So one of the major characteristics of love that we see in Scripture is service. Are we together? And I'm going to show us that in Scriptures. Just stay with me. One of the major characteristics of love is service, right? Which means that love serves. Now, <clears throat> I know that we know about love languages. You know, there are five love languages. In fact, somebody can do revised edition and say, and come and add two again and say there are seven, <laughs> right? Because the wisdom of the world is inconsistent. Are we together here? It is inconsistent. When I was in secondary school, when I was in primary school, they said that um, 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 every living thing has, is it seven characteristic now? Eight. Mr. Ninja D, eight characteristic. By the time I got to the university, they said that, ah, that thing that was there before, <laughs> they've upgraded it to, it's Mrs. Now. Mrs. Niger what? I think it was Mr. Niger Dark now. Mr. Niger Dark. I know that there's now, um, A was for adaptation, no, A was adaptation, and C for competition, Mr. Niger Dark. Can you imagine that? Someone will see come again and say, no, it's Mr. Niger Damsel. You know, Mr. Niger Damsel. Very confused me. Now, I understand that we have love languages, right? Um, word of affirmation, giving of gifts, act of service. You know, for a very long time, I thought that my love language was word of, of, um, of affirmation until I got married. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. I thought my love life was word of affirmation until I got married. <laughs> Amen. 
any material or anything that doesn't have inference from God's word or does, that does not establish its truth in God's word is an inconsistent material. No matter how good or sound it is. I'm not saying we cannot learn from them. We can learn from them. But don't make that your ultimate guide on how to go about the things of life. The Bible is our ultimate guide. I'm still going to, I'm trying to build an introduction so that we understand um, where we are going to. Remember, we are talking about the believer's labor of love. Amen? It's not relationship. But I want to use this to build a foundation so that we understand where we are going and we're able to understand easily. Glory to Jesus. Now, so, um, whatever material does not find its truth in God's word, it is inconsistent. Don't make that your ultimate guide. Learn from it and move. Don't say, according to this, no, 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 no. Quote scriptures more than he quotes books. <laughs> are we together here now? All right. Now, so I was saying, I told my love language word of affirmation until I got married. And I realized that, man, all of all these things are good, but that's not the ultimate. That speaking love languages or loving your partner or loving people is beyond the love languages. Are we together? Let me take, let me, let's take a poll, for example, now. Um, who, wants, who wants to volunteer to tell me what their love language is? You know, you've read, you probably know um, about love languages. Who wants to tell me? Sabah, you want to tell me what your love language is? You can stand up. Can we have a mic? So just give it to her. Tell us what our love language is. Okay, you have a mic. Fantastic. <coughs> Hallelujah. This is my time. Be fast, Sabah. Okay, fast. My own is, number one, is word of affirmation. And yes. <laughs> Acts of service. Acts of service. All right, great. So somebody else who wants to go again, tell us what your love language is. Anybody now? There, there are no right or wrong answers. It's yours now, your love language. Oh, yeah? Okay. Act of service. Act of service, okay. That's all. That's ah, fantastic. Very simple man. Who else wants to go? Stephen K, you want to go? Okay, who else? Eh? That's my love language. <laughs> That's a love tongue. <laughs> all right, who else? Who else? Somebody else. Let's, let's quickly, let's move it along. Who else? I don't understand what is going on. People do, oh, people do, okay, I understand. Oh, great. Ah, all right, great. Okay. Brother, tell us, what's your love language? Quality time. Quality Sorry? time. Quality time. Quality time. All right, great. Okay, great. Can we celebrate everybody that spoke? Can we celebrate everybody that spoke? Now, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. Somebody said, love language is one of affirmation, right? Now, let's say that you find somebody... Who tells you all the time that you're very beautiful? I love to spend time with you. Somebody, not me. You know, just tells you all of all that and, <laughs> and, and tells you all of all that, that, oh, you are the apple of my eyes, you are the air that I breathe. Tell the person, let me not be the air I breathe, so unless you have asthma. <laughs> all right? You'll be like, oh, if I don't see you, I cannot eat my tummy rumbles. or <laughs> salon. So, you know, the person tells you all of all that, all that, but the person is constantly cheating on you. of service the person is always there for you you know you want to go to the market the person is there let me go for you you have you have a business you're working on say let me do it for you it does all of all that for you but the person is constantly cheating on you but the person speaks your love language perfectly word of affirmation acts of service do you think that you, you believe that that person loves you i don't believe the person doesn't love you right yes. why because he's acting when as in to like be doing all all kind of things that I don't expect. So, you should go. Because, while the person might speak all of all those things fluently, the person doesn't have one thing for you. The person is not sacrificing for you. The person is not giving up certain things for you. Are we together here now? But the person is speaking love, your love language. The person is a poet. You wake up in the morning, wonderful text, three paragraphs, four pages. You know that? Before you say, what I want to eat, you better already send you lunch, send you dinner. But the person has missed one thing. The person is not serving you. He's not sacrificing for you. And that's one thing. Love is sacrifice. Someone say love is sacrifice. Love is sacrifice. Love is sacri Let's see John 3, 16. Popular scripture. The Bible says, everybody, can we all read it together? I want to go. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish, but to have everlasting life. We see God demonstrating love to us that for God so loved the world that he sacrificed Jesus for us. Why? Because he loves us. 
God didn't say that, oh, you all are the apple of my eyes, but you see, I cannot give my son to die for your sins. I know that you actually need my son to die for your sin, but I'm so sorry. But you know what? You are the apple of my eyes, right? I love you so much. In fact, I will send you money. You know, I will bless, in blessing, I will bless you. In prosperity, I will prosper you. But then, the fundamental problem that you want him to solve for you, which is the problem of sin, he cannot solve it for you. Do you think that that God loves you? But the demonstration of God's love is that he gave his son for us because he loved us. Sacrificial love. Let's see another, another interesting scripture. Let's see uh, John chapter 15, verse 12 to 13. John 15. Glory to God. Come on, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Everybody can read on to go. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. 13. It's a greater love as no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Glory to God. So, Jesus said that the greatest love of all is that somebody lays down their life for you. Are we together? And that is the love that Jesus expressed. He laid down his life for us. It's a greater love as no man than this, that the man lays down his life for us. Which means that if a person wants to express that they love you, it means that they must sacrifice for you. Are we together? Are we together here now? So it means that they should sacrifice for you to show that they love you. And that's what Jesus said. So loving someone means sacrificing for that person. It means that every time that you tell a person that I love you, what you are telling the person is that I can do anything for you. It means that I can give and give up anything because of you. Are we together here now? Amen. Like I said, I said that when I got my, I got my word of, of um, what's that thing again? My love language was word of affirmation, you know? <laughs> It's not a word of affirmation. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so it is that you can give and give up anything for that person. You see, I love my wife so much, and there's nothing I cannot give for her. Nothing, absolutely nothing, right? And yes, I'm talking to you. Listen, <laughs> there, there is there is absolutely nothing I cannot give up for my wife. I don't like to cook. I I don't like it. I don't just like it. I don't just like cooking. But I cook for my wife. Right? I might not give her breakfast in bed. I've given her breakfast on the chair, on the table. <laughs> right? But I, I cook. Why? Because it makes her happy. Right? And it makes her happy. So I said, you know what? I'm going to leave this. I don't like to cook and sacrifice to make sure that my wife is happy. As a man, I don't. I, you know, men, we don't. In my, in my house, you have to sit to pee. Glory to God. You know, you go to the bathroom, you want to pee, you have to sit down. He, he's stranger, me. He be like, ah, shut man, joke or turn. You man, joke or you But I have to sit up in my house because my wife doesn't like it. Now I have to learn. The day I forget, you know, something you've done for over twenty six years of your life, and you, I, you just something you just you just forget that. Oh, I'm supposed to sit down to pee. I'll be announcing. I'm so sorry. I actually forgot to from the bathroom. You get it? Why? Because. I love her and there's nothing I cannot give or give up because of her, right? I sacrificed, I, I, I sacrificed that for her. Are we together here now? So I said all of all that to say that the basic and fundamental, if you don't have the basic and fundamental idea of what love is, you will struggle with your love work as a believer. The fundamental idea of love, the SI unit of love is sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. sacrifice. What is the SI unit of love? So how do we measure that you love somebody? It is a sacrifice that you give to them. I was talking to somebody, you know, I was, I was in Abel Kusa um, last week, and I was, I was having a conversation with somebody who was like a younger sister to me because I was, in, I was there. And she was just telling me about a relationship, and I said that, wow, this is interesting. I said, do you love this person? She said, yes. I said, does he love you? She said, yes. I said, how do you know he loves you? And she told me, she said, one night, I was coming from Lagos. She, she, sells, um, she, sells, she sells wares, clothes. And she went to Lagos, a coal market, to buy um, those things. And she was coming back to Abel Kusa that night as at past 11. She said she has, a, she has a cab man that would usually bring her down to school area. It was about three kilometers from where she, from where she was to school, um, or three or, or two kilometers there about. And she said she was trying to reach the person, but the person was not there. It was getting late, past 11 in the night. And it's not Lagos. It's Abel Kusa at at... 10 p.m. You don't see fly anymore. Some places are dark. Are we together? Glory <laughs> to God. So it was past 11 already, and she was panicking, and she just texted. You know, she was communicating with this person, and he said that I am here at. Um, I'm here at. I'm currently here. She told him where, where he was, and he said, you know what? Just stay where you are. Just find. Try to find a place safe. And he found a way to get a car and drove to where she was and brought her back safely to school. And I said, wow. 
not minding that it was past 11, maybe as he is going, his tire might spoil, or you know, something might happen to him on the way, and he went over there to bring her back. And I was like, wow, so he sacrificed this much for you. And she began to recount different experiences of how he has also sacrificed for her. And I said, wow, this is interesting. What is she trying to say, or what am I trying to communicate, is that the, the unit for measurement of love, whether we know it, whether we realize it, or we don't realize it, is sacrifice. Glory to Jesus. Is sacrifice. So every time that we say that we love something, we are saying that I can give anything for this person. Every time that we say that we love the Lord, we are saying that there is nothing I cannot give or sacrifice for the Lord. So the question is that do you love the Lord? Think about it before you answer. <laughs> do you love the Lord? Because the, what's the SI unit of love any, again? I've seen people, I've seen people and it always breaks my heart. I've seen people sacrifice the Lord that they love for other things that they claim that they don't love. Are you, are you, are you following me here now? I've seen people sacrifice the Lord that you say you love for other things that you say you don't love. How many of you love money? You say you don't love, because the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Are we together? So you say, you, I don't love money, but I want to have money. Are we together? You know, you are very say, I don't love money, I like money. <laughs> money is good, amen. Don't get me wrong. Money is very good. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that people have said that I love the Lord. I love the Lord. But they keep on sacrificing the Lord for other things. So you tell somebody that, why were you not evangelism yesterday? He said, you know, um, I just registered for this new business masterclass that is going to change the trajectory of my finances and my prosperity. It was going to launch me to 10x my income. And that is why you didn't come for evangelism. Are we together? He said, why didn't you, uh, you, didn't, you didn't study your FBI? This, you didn't study your FBI at all. You didn't study your Bible this morning. You know, you didn't do FBI this morning. Or you didn't have time to pray this morning. He said, I you know, Pastor, ah, actually, you know, I work on the island. I have to wake up by 4 a.m. every morning. You know, take my bath and step out of the house at 4.47 a.m. every morning. You know, and so there is no time. And you say you love the Lord. Glory to God. So, you, the things you say you don't love, you know, and the interesting thing is that people actually genuinely hate their jobs. Are we together? If I ask you now that how many of you love your jobs, many people here will not raise their hands. Should we, how many of you love your jobs? Except for brother, some colleagues, because the name of his company is his name. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> but if I ask you, how many of you, have, nobody's going to raise it. Many people are not going to raise your hand. And so the job that you say you hate, you are sacrificing more for it than for the Lord you say you love. It doesn't make it make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. Glory to God. Amen. It doesn't make sense to me. You give more to your job than you give more to the Lord you say you love. Amen. So, the, 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 the measurement that you love something, it is that job you love, or you are just deceiving yourself. That job is your lover. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. 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 So, where your sacrifice is, that is where your love is. What you sacrifice to the most is what you love the most. That is where your love is. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Yeah. But there's, a, there's, a, there's an inherent problem. People always want to feel love before they can love. People want to feel it before they can love. Amen. But watch this. All through scripture, especially the times where love is spoken of in the context of the believers. Where love is spoken of in the context of the believers. Love is never spoken of as a feeling or an emotion. Love is always given to us to do as an instruction. Somebody say instruction. Let me show you a few places. Matthew 19 verse 19. Let's see, you're going to be fast with me. We're going to open um, many scriptures at this time now. Matthew 19, we're just, so we're entering into the message now. Glory to God. <laughs> Matthew 19, verse 19. Can we all read together? 19, 19. Matthew 19, verse 19. All right, can we all read together? I want to go. Honor your father and your mother. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Instruction. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Let's see Matthew 22, verse 37. Matthew 22, 37. Everybody, let's go. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Instruction. You shall love the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Luke 6 verse 27. Let's see that. Luke 6 27. These are the words of Jesus. All right. Everybody, can we go together? But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those that hate you. Instruction again. Colossians 3 verse 19. Let's see that quickly. Colossians 3, 19. Instructions on love. Everybody want to go? 
Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. Instruction. First Peter 2 verse 17. First Peter 2 verse 17. Everybody want to go? Honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Instruction. All true scriptures, when love is spoken to in the context of believers, it is given as instructions. We are instructed to love. Why? Because we have been called into love. Somebody say called into love. So the believer does not have a why God can only instruct you when He has given you the ability to perform. So we don't have a love problem. Say that I cannot love that person. Why? Because the person has a big head and their nose is not fine. No, we have the super abundance of God's love inside of us. It is a follow come with salvation, like Mama would put it. Follow come with salvation. We have the abundance of God's love. Galatians 5 22. He said, For God has he said, For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, kindness, peace, long suffering. Love, that's the fruit of the Spirit. It came with salvation. Love is part of it. Um, uh, 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 the Bible says in Romans, For the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. The love of God is poured out in our heart. The word poured out there means that. The love of God is spilled in our hearts. Are we together? Which means that it is spilled. You know when something spills? You know how it spills? It spills and litters everywhere. That is how the love of God has spread abroad in our hearts. That we shed abroad in our heart the love of God. So we don't have a love problem. Glory to Jesus. The reason why we can sacrifice and labor in love is because we have love in abundance. So we can sacrifice. Do you remember what Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10? He said that, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, he said, he said yet not I. He said, but the grace of God which is in me helps him to labor abundantly more than they hope. So the reason why he can labor is because of grace. Are we together? The reason why we can labor, why we can have the labor of love is because we have love. Are we together here? Yeah. So it is not something that we don't have. We have it already. Glory to Jesus. Amen. And we have seen that the fundamental ingredient for love is sacrifice. And that's what the Bible calls it. The labor of love. Love is sacrificial all the time. All the time it is sacrificial. Only that sometimes you are sacrificing little. Sometimes you are sacrificing big. Sometimes you are sacrificing medium. But love is sacrificial all the time. Somebody say love is sacrificial all the time. So if you claim to love something and you're not sacrificing, you, you're not expressing the labor of love. Are we together here now? You say that, oh, I love the Lord, but uh, this money, I've budgeted it away. <laughs> uh, I, love, I love the Lord, but uh, this money, uh, I've budgeted it away. You know, like somebody said that, you know, have you heard funny stories? People are like, ah, I love the Lord, but you see this dodo. Ah, ah, how long God I can drop it. I can't drop it. As if God says I should drop eating plantain. I can't drop it. And you, you say that you love, but love is because why? They don't understand what love is. How we together? Many people think that they know what love is, you know where we, where we came from, but they don't know what love is. Somebody say love is sacrificial. Love is sacrificial. Glory to God. First John three sixteen, not John three sixteen, or First John three sixteen. But I think the John three sixteen have a thing with love. Glory to God. All right, can we all together want to go? He said, by this we know love because he laid down his life for us. And we also want to lay down our lives for our brethren. So how do we love our brethren? We lay down our lives for them. We lay down our lives for them. You cannot say that you love your brother and, and you are angry with him. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You say, I love him, but ah, he offended me. Ah, he pained me. <laughs> Amen. That is something else. It's not the labor of love. <laughs> we are like your friend. I, can't, I cannot forgive him. Really now? You see, the problem is that, I said it before, the problem is that you want to feel love to love. Tell me, what love was Jesus feeling when he was on the cross dying for your sins? What love was he feeling? What love was in the heart? What love was the Father feeling from you, you that He came to die for? What love was He feeling from you when He gave up Jesus to die for our sins? Watch Him being nailed on the cross. What love was He feeling? But for us, we be like, I have to feel it to love. Love is sacrificial. It is an instruction. It is a responsibility. Somebody say responsibility, and say I love well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I, I, I love my pastor so, oh, I love my pastor so much. Ah, this is my pastor. I love him so much. Eh? What have you given or given up for the sake of your pastors? Ah, this is my church. Ah, Kings of. I love the Kings of. 
I love the kings of bro. Evangelism will not see you. Church in the morning, you will come late. Giving, you will not give. You are in church. Respond. Glory to God, you will not respond. They are singing songs. You stand like a rocko tree. But you say you love the kings of You are just joking. Because you don't know what love is. And that's why we are learning what love is today. Are we together here now? If you love something, you will sacrifice for that thing. Say, you know me, I'm an introvert. I don't like to shout. Eh. Okay. Imagine that your, your, your partner, your, your, your partner tells you that, ah, I'm sorry, me, I'm a woman bitter. I don't know how to stop. <laughs> but see, you're laughing. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense, Abby. Why? Because you feel like, ah, you should sacrifice this for me. You'll be like, ah, I can't stop her. Ah. <laughs> but you want other things to stop for you. But you don't want other things. You see, ultra scripture. You know, the Bible never tells us about um, and when you are loved. And when you are loved. You know, we don't see that. It is always an instruction for you to love other people. Because when you love, when she loves, you will feel loved. So everybody everybody is called to love. We are, need to, we are called to labor in love. We are called to sacrifice. All the time. All the time. All the time. He said, that, oh, ah, this pastor said, he doesn't even need to know. Me yet, I was at the last um, Savi Congress, workers meeting. I came all the way from school. They didn't even do something. Uh, because I now come one time now. Your sacrifice, is your sacrifice season now? Oh, you only sacrifice, you only love during the dry season. <laughs> now it's rainy season, you cannot come. You say, ah, there's rain in my area. There was, you know, I was talking to a worker one time, one time, and I said that, wait, you didn't come for, I cannot remember, I think it was Workers' Congress. So you didn't come for Workers' Congress. You say, ah, it's rain, there was flood in our area. I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, wow, there was flood, there was, it rained, there was flood in your area. Okay, all right, no problem. You know, people are so quick to give excuses as to why they are not loving Hey, it's because we don't have light. It's because we don't do this one. It's because my clothes burnt. It's because I could not iron. It's because excuses for everything. But when it comes to their work, ah, no, yes, they will move the mountains to ensure that they get things done. It is that work that you say you hate. That's that what you love. You don't love the Lord. Praise Jesus. You know, sometimes I just, I just, I just, I'm just in awe, and I keep telling myself all the time, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Do you know why? Because I'm telling myself that there is nothing too big that I cannot give to the Lord. Nothing too big. My time, my life, my energy, my essence, my being, my status, my social credibility. Nothing I cannot give to the Lord. Nothing. Because I love the Lord. Let me show you something. Let's see John chapter 10, verse 17. There are a lot of things I still want to say, but I'm just going to round up here. I was, I was going to show us how do we labor in love for people and for our church, but let me just round up here. Let's see John chapter 10, verse 17. I, have you been blessed this morning? John 10, 17. Let's see that. Everybody, can we read together once ago? Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I might seek it again. Now, so when, you, when we read the scripture, we should always read it with the mindset of Christ in it. So, so he said the father loves him because he laid down his life. Is that really why the father loves him? So the father already loves him. Are we together here now? You don't have to do something to end the father's love. Are we together? Are we together here now? So he said the father loves him because I laid down my life. But let us see that um, the word because there also is the word, um, is the word um, as do, right? The word because there is also the word as do is the word um, um, uh, is the word as do also, right? So therefore the father loves me as though I lay down my life that I might take it again. But let us bring it, take it back. Now, imagine that you put imagine, imagine that you put um, um, the because before the, de- before the therefore and say that because my father loves me, I lay down my life that I might take it again. Are we together? Because the father cannot love Jesus because he's putting down his life. Amen. So let's imagine that it is that because, I, because the father loves me, I lay down my life so that I might take it again. Let me tell you why. Let me give you, let me give you this analogy. Now, when Jesus was on the cross dying, they were also piercing him. And Jesus said, I forgive them for they know not what. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Right? Now, why was Jesus praying for the people that were persecuting him? What gave Jesus the courage to continue to go and die for us on the cross? What gives us the courage to love other people even when they are not deserving of our love? 
Because God loves us. Because the love of God is inside of us. Are we together here? So how do we go ahead to love people that are undeserving, seemingly undeserving, because nobody is undeserving of love. Why? Because God already loves them. So seemingly undeserving of love, how do we go ahead to love them? We love them because, we, because God has already loved us. Because Christ loves us. So we love them. How are we together here now? So Christ loves us, so we love people. So love is beyond, love, love is beyond feeling. It is, see, it is good to feel loved, but it is important to love. How are we together here now? It is good to what? To feel loved. It is what? Important to love. We must love people who have been called into love. We must love people. We must sacrifice for people. So you see somebody and your face is strong. Like Olumo Rock. You'll be like, that's how my face is. <laughs> your face can't be like that. You have to sacrifice our face for your brother. How are we together here now? You have to sacrifice the things that you have for your brother. Because you love them. You know, I've been married for a while now. Not too long ago. <laughs> I'll be like, ah, you've been married for a long time. I'm just, I'm going to be two, I'm going to marry for two years by August. Glory to God. You know how time flies, right? I know, right? Thank you very much. <laughs> and I've realized that to honestly love him is a sacrifice. It's not measured by how poetic you are. <laughs> Or how much gift you give, it is sacrifice. Because you see people who are poor, who are poor, but their love is strong. What do you think is happening there? It's because both of them are sacrificing for each other. It's, it is the sacrifice that pushes you to give word of affirmation. It is a sacrifice that pushes you to do acts of service. It is a sacrifice that pushes you to give gifts and spend quality time. Without that sacrificial ideology and that fundamental basic sacrifice or that, that basic SI unit of love, if we don't have that, we're going to struggle to love people. So all the time, know that love is sacrifice. I give, I give, I give, I give love. I love somebody. You love your church. You love the Lord. You give, you sacrifice for God. You say, I love the Lord, but you don't even sacrifice five minutes out of your day to pray. To spend time with the Lord that you love. He said that my day was so busy. You know, when I hear people say that, I had a busy day. It's very funny to me. And it will forever be funny to me. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Because you just commonize everybody in the world that love the Lord and spend time. You just put us under a box that these people, they don't have work. <laughs> they don't have work. They don't have anything you are doing with their lives. You are the only one that have business master class you are registering for. You are the only one that have course upgrade that you are registering for. You are the only one that have prosperity trajectory that you are registering for. So the rest of us, you just put us under a box, small box, and if you really check it, you are not as busy as the people that are laboring in the work of God. Ask your pastors what time, what time we sleep to prepare for the word. What time we sleep in a day. You know, pastor was telling me that he said he was going to sleep early on, on, on Friday. He said he was going to sleep early. I mean, he slept what time? Past one. <laughs> early. And he was up again by six o'clock. Not because of his, not because of his family, because of you. I know you say I'm busy. I'm busy. You are busy. Do you sleep? Do you sleep? If, if I ask you, did you? It's always said that I'm busy. I say, yeah, wow. That means you didn't sleep yesterday. You're like ah, I slept so only for four hours. I say, yeah, wow. You have time to sleep. Wow, that's interesting. Huh? But you don't have ten minutes to pray. He said that. Why did you pray for your members this week? You say, ah, I was so busy this week. Fifteen minutes. Out of 24 hours, 15 minutes, it shows where your priority lies. You actually, you actually are just having the love in the mouth. It's not sacrificial. Let's, let's see one last scripture and then we'll close. First John 3, verse 17 to 18. First John 3, 17 to 18. You know, they say, there's this saying in preaching, they say, I love you, no before. Thank you very much. So after today, I love you, no before. You can't, be loving, you can't be loving the Lord with your mouth now. If all of us love the Lord with our mouth, so how will the world progress? <laughs> all right. 1 John 5, verse... Um, sorry, 1 John 3, not 5. 3, 17. 
Okay, it's about whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him. How does he love the how does the love of God abide in him? Glory to God. Verse 18. Wants to go, everybody? My little children, let us not love a word on tongue, but in deed and in truth. Oh, Pastor, I love you so much. I love you so much. What have you done for Pastor? <laughs> ah, sister, sister, sister Grace. Oh, I love you so much. What have you done for Sister Grace? What have you done for your church? I love my church so much. What have you done for your church? Someone say, love is sacrifice. Love say, my love is sacrificial. Love and that sacrifice is the labor. Are, you, are we following you now? That sacrifice is the what? Is the labor. That's the labor of love. So if you are loving and you are not sacrificing, maybe you have love, you don't have labor of love. <laughs> Someone say, I labor in love. Someone say, I labor in love. Can you talk to God about what you heard this morning? Talk to God about what you heard this morning. Talk to God about what you heard this morning. 